Welcome all to Chasing Tents. My name is Abi. Thanks for joining me in this new and very interesting episode where I am at a very special place. This is the Helmet Inspection Company Limited and these guys do a fantastic job in a lot of kind of crash testing with helmets. Now, there is a big myth out there that if a helmet drops from your bike saddle or, you know, or your seat or you bought a second hand helmet and you're not sure of uh, you know, what the history of the helmet was, if you've had a big crash, you know never to use that helmet again. But with tiny little scuffs, people get worried. A lot of kind of people throw away the helmet and stuff like that. A company like this really think outside the box and the kind of the stress uh, kind of measuring equipment they've got, the laser equipment they've got, and we'll go through that all in detail uh, with Professor John. But what I really want to tell you is companies like this, you know, are very rare. It's a British company based just outside the East Midlands Airport. And then I'm gonna de in detail show you exactly how a helmet is scanned if you've had a minor crash, minor I say, if it's a major crash, you know never to use the helmet again, or you've dropped the helmet slightly because there are so many myths out there. And also you gotta think of sometimes, not all helmets are the same. Sometimes a helmet uh, could be manufactured in a, in a certain way, or dare I say, certain incompetence that from the inside out, you can actually see where the issue is. So I'm not gonna to talk too much. This was uh, me talking about just the company uh, briefly, but I'm gonna put the mic to uh, Professor John and I'll let him explain to you exactly what these machines are, how the laser works and how the whole scanning works and then what happens after they've scanned the helmet. Okay, well, thanks for that. Um, what I want to explain is how we convert this green light, this laser beam, into something useful, how we can measure things. I've spent a, a long time in, in really developing this sort of instrumentation and what it does is it's a bit like a hologram, a 3D image. The sort of thing you've got on your credit card, those little holographic images. If you were to double expose a hologram and between the two exposures you were to, to move it slightly, you get a set of fringes on that hologram and those would be uh, telling you how that object moved. We've gone a long way since then. We've brought TV cameras into the system so that we can get the, the data in real time and we've also changed the things that we measure. So instead of measuring just how the way the thing moves, we can now measure strain on the object. So one of the things I can do here is I can show you how we're going to measure the helmet. So you can see over here a picture of the helmet. Um, this is what we're actually looking at here. You can see that sort of green light. It sort of has a funny pattern to it. We call that the speckle pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a little bit of strain into this and this instrument measures in real time the strain on this object. And by introducing a little bit of strain um, I'll then see whether or not there's any damage in, in the object. So to start with, you'll notice that I, the first thing I want to do is to grab the live image and store it into the computer. And then every subsequent image that's coming through the computer, I'm going to subtract. And one of the things we can do, for example, is if I put my hand in the way, you can now see those fringes coming off and that's the heat coming off my hand. So we're actually measuring the heat. This isn't a thermal imager where I'm measuring temperature. I'm actually measuring heat flow. That's actually quite interesting when you're actually designing bits of engines and cooling systems, etc. So now I've got to put some heat into my helmet to see if I can bend it. And so the, the best way of doing that is There you can see I've put heat by breathing on it. And I can get the computer now to process that data. And that is literally the strain data from me breathing on a crash helmet. Now we can see a fairly uniform gray level. It's a bit like being the weather forecaster here. Here we can see the gray, uh, interesting stuff that's sort of saying that's great. But we've got this patch here that is showing us some difference. Now, we don't do everything by breathing on it. What we can actually do is put 
use a expensive heat source here and we can do the same thing but we can now add a bit more heat over this whole area and now if I process that picture we can now see a very different image and I can get the computer to work out the surface strain over that whole area. Now if this was good, if this was a uniform and properly made helmet, I'd expect to see a nice uniform grey field. But we can now see in this region here, as we saw earlier on with that little white patch from me breathing on it, by putting a, a bit more heat into the surface, and we're not talking a great deal of heat, we can now start to see there's some, some damage in there. And in fact that's actually what's happened. This, the rider of this helmet came off, um, hit the back of his head quite uh, seriously. But if you actually look, so if I now present the helmet to the camera, there are no cracks in the gel coat. So if you were to then have picked that helmet up and thought, well, that's okay, live to fight another day, in fact, you'd be totally wrong. That amount of damage, the amount of damage, the, the area of that damage and the fact that the damage shows up so easily um, with that small amount of heat tells me that um, the helmet's compromised there. Now what does that mean? If the, the helmet hits the surface and gets damaged, the outer shell is in this case damaged, we have a problem. Has it damaged the EPS liner? Doesn't really matter, the shell is compromised. That's bad. Can we have a situation where we could damage the liner and not damage the shell? No, because you need the shell to take the impact and then that transfers the energy into the liner. So having damage on the shell is indicative of the helmet a helmet failure. The EPS liner may well be in good shape or it may well be damaged, I don't know, but this tells us that that's a failed helmet. We can't get a situation where we would fail the EPS liner, the expanded polystyrene, sorry, and we wouldn't fail the shell. In the case of an impact, the shell will always indicate whether the helmet has failed, whether or not the EPS liner has failed. Welcome back guys. So I hope that made sense what uh, Professor John said. Now Professor John uh, has been working uh, with laser technology for about 25 years. Now they've worked on, you can say, hulls of, uh, of boats and ships, uh, lifeboats. Uh, they've worked on, you know, st uh, building structures, uh, building equipment, you name it. They've worked with even healthcare, you know, bone structures, cornea of our eyes. They've done a lot of work on laser and stress management. So they know a thing or two about you know, how everything works. And they've been doing it for 25 years. And now they brought it on to helmets. Now, let me tell you what helmets I brought here and why have I actually come here. So I've got a few helmets. Two of them are mine. So recently I had a crash. Um, Minorish crash. Uh, seemed big, but it was okay. As I was tumbling, I slightly grazed this my AGV Pista GPR. Now if I bring it closer, you can see this graze mark. Now for, on camera it might look big, but only the lamination, or I should say the lacquer, has come off. Um, so the AGV engineer at the Donington Park circuit was present uh, on the day of the track day. He looked at it. I mean, every, everything looked absolutely fine. The graze was just the lacquer. And he said, look, you know, absolutely fine. Looks okay. You can race with it, but obviously no one will give you anything in writing. That's the way the world works. It's absolutely fine. No problem. So I thought for my peace of mind, rather than putting decals or stickers on there, why not I bring this to a place like this? Then, secondly, I've got another AGV helmet. This is a GT Veloce from 2014 or 2015. I just, I bought this helmet in 2014 end maybe, and I dropped it from the seat of the bike. And even though I use it sometimes for the road, um, I just thought I'll bring this helmet along 
uh, and get it scanned. Um, and we'll take it from there. This helmet belongs to a, a good friend, uh, Cal from Hyper Motard King uh, YouTube channel. And he's given me his uh, helmet to see if, uh, you know, he had a minor crash. Well, the crash was major, actually. But when I say minor crash, minor on the head. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if your helmet is absolutely battered and it's got a huge mark on it, you know, no point even bringing it here. You know, it, this has got a, a slight little scuff on the front. So, even he wanted a bit of peace of mind. And then I brought a Cafe Racer helmet belonging to a good friend, Paul uh, Lewis. Hello, Paul, if you're watching. So Paul bought this. It's a 20, 2007 helmet. So he bought this from another, another person, never been crashed. He just wanted to see for peace of mind to see if everything is okay. So yeah, variety of helmets with different kind of crash or stress damage, I should say. And once I've got the results of all four, I'm not going to put these people under pressure today and say, you know what, because they have to put certain stickers on the helmet, certain, certain gel coating before they put it there. There's a big procedure. And as you can see, no visors and as, as less as audio equipment as possible on the helmet. So we could get a, a very accurate stress test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave all the four helmets here. I'm going to go home, tell you the results from the home and also I will tell you exactly how to book it. It's 40 pounds only, my goodness me. You know guys, for 40 pounds, I mean this helmet is a, I mean I've got a racing license so it's it's about 600 pounds. If you don't have a race license then you could, you could be paying up to a thousand pounds, 800 pounds for an AGV GPR or a GPRR. Um, so yeah, so for a sake of 40 pounds and you know what, this is something personal. You know, a company like this, got laser equipment, it's huge, this premises is massive. They've got laser equipment everywhere, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber there. They do stress testing on everything. And, you know, for 40 pounds, you, you could think how much money are they actually making on this? I think this is a great service for people like us, track day goers, road riders. Uh, you know, we could bring our helmets here. We can get a certificate after the stress test, which will tell us, um, you know, um, what state the helmet is and then you will have a massive peace of mind to use it or not the last part of the video will be me in the house with the certificates and telling you exactly you know the the crash and the helmet which actually fell from the motorbike and tell you all about the results and see where we go from there i really hope my helmet is still okay because i don't want to shell out another 700 pound in uh, in kind of making uh bops not making and buying another helmet so i'll catch you guys in a bit Welcome back everyone and as promised earlier I was going to tell you the results of the scan once the helmets do come back and come back they have and they were very well packed by the helmet inspection company so in your £40 cost of the scan the return delivery is included so just to explain the process to you briefly you have your helmet you sit on a computer or your phone you register your helmet and yourself and you then pay £40 then you send your helmet through your local post office or any other delivery you prefer and you pay that cost to send your helmet there but then the fort in that 40 pound they scan your helmet and at every step of the way so when they open the box they tell you in a, in a text they put a a lovely kind of i think it's called an nfc sticker they put that on this is like one of those contactless um, kind of technology stickers where that sticker holds all the information about your helmet you know um, kind of um, the health checks previous health checks and if they failed it or not and they put a red sticker if they if they find an issue somewhere on the helmet they put a red sticker there um, and then obviously every time they take the helmet to the next step like a scan uh, or anything else you will be kept informed now what happened to all the helmets so all together there were four helmets uh, I gave them so two belong to my friends and two of them were mine so the first one the cafe racer helmet it was a 2007 helmet and they said it's absolutely safe to use so look at this guys a lot of companies just like mattress companies tell you not to use a mattress after a certain amount of time same thing uh, happens with helmet companies as well some companies say three years some say five years and they tell you not to use it after a certain amount of time you know on what basis those kind of um, uh, notions are are valid so a company like helmet inspection company do actually properly scan your helmet and then they can tell you if it's actually okay to use or not now the second helmet was uh, another showy helmet which was 
uh, crashed uh, unfortunately by my mate big crash but you know very very slight damage in the front and that was okay to use however my two AGVs I've got some bad news on my lovely beloved AGV GPR Pisa GPR um, and fully carbon helmet a lot of money I paid for it and this was without the racing discount when I never used to race before and uh, unfortunately they've advised me I can't use this helmet so that's out of the way I'm in the process of ordering a new one through um, RST because they do a racing discount on RI and AGV so that's going to come later on now I was pretty upset when I got that email but along with that email I was really curious I said can I have some scanned images of my helmet uh, telling me where the helmet is not good now, now remember as I told you earlier I had a minor graze on the tarmac and very very minor gra graze which only took the the lacquer off but you know they must have spotted something to tell me that I shouldn't be using this so I said okay um, you know if I can't have the scanned in images so they said we don't really send out scanned uh, images of the scan because loads of people can interpret them in very different ways they could have loads of cold bags because people are passionate about the helmets like I am and saying you know what on one image it looks great and I'll show you the image, uh, images on the screen now which they've sent me just for this video so loads of people can in interpret these images differently so they can have insurance implications or the loads of red tape are around these things so the experts know what they're looking at so a layman like me can passionately look at a scan image and take my own interpretation uh, you know I can never say this word interpretation and uh, you know and um, I can just think all sorts so they said for this video they'll give me these images but they don't send them uh, which makes sense now last one is the AGV GT Veloce which fell like that from the saddle or the seat of my Aprilia and um, this helmet is okay to use so another you know notion out there or myth out there is if a helmet falls off your bike and this fell on a tarmac that is absolutely useless no it's not useless it's totally okay to use one thing I forgot to tell you when you send your helmets to them you have to take your visor off and any kind of center equipment or audio equipment off so they it's easier for them uh, you know otherwise it just gets cumbersome so um, yeah so guys these were the results of the scan three helmets fi uh, fine and one of them not fine and recently I saw a post from the helmet inspection company Christian Eden, who is a British superbike rider, saying he was very happy with the scan. He had a, a little uh, kind of excursion in the gravel. And uh, after getting the, his helmet scanned, he can now use it again. So if they are good enough for a British superbike rider and he can take their word for it and he's happy with it, who am I to complain? So I'm really happy with the results. It's cost me £40, £40, £80, but, you know, bought the helmets together are 1100 pounds so um, you know your 40 pound goes a long way so uh, guys hope you found this video interesting and knowledgeable and companies like helmet inspection company don't really come that often you know they're doing something completely out of the box and they are they are they have collaborated with with a company who does all these scanning work uh, for the last two three decades uh, so they know a thing or two about scanning and stress management. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to put it in the comment section. Um, Martin, who's the CEO or the MD of the Helmet Inspection Company, he will be watching this video. And if there are any comments which are complicated for me to answer, I will get Martin uh, to reply back. And also I will leave some links of the Helmet Inspection Company uh, in the description section. So guys, hope you found it useful. Please keep liking the videos and subscribing. If you like a video, other similar minded people get notifications on the YouTube about this video as well. So take care. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.